Hello, hello, and welcome to a new tutorial. Today, I wanna to be sharing with you how you can take advantage of a few different things in Canva that you hopefully know about if you've been using Canva for a little bit, but I also think that you might not. Every now and then I talk to people who are either brand new to Canva and they're just mind blown by everything. If that's you, welcome. You're gonna to love today's tutorial. And for people that have been using it for a while, it's usually something that I share that they haven't actually taken advantage of or didn't know existed. So I wanna share with you those because I can guarantee you'll love all of them. They'll be either great refreshers or you won't have heard about them at all. And tip number five is one that I've never actually shared before. And it is one of my favorites and saves me from a bind so, so regularly. So let's dive in. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and I'm a graphic designer who loves teaching business owners how they can create their own incredible brand and graphics using programs just like Canva in a more strategic, time-saving and fun way for their businesses so that I can actually grow their businesses because that's what we're all here for. So firstly, I want to share with you some fun photo tips. So I've actually got a whole tutorial on this, so I'm not going to go into it hugely in depth, but I need to make sure that you know these exist so that you can then explore them. So firstly, I've just inserted a photo into my design here. What I want you to do if you've got any photo, this is the same for any stock photos you might use from Canva, any of your own photos you might upload, whatever it is, if you've got a photo, you can press this edit photo button. There's a whole range of features here that you can use. And I want to just make sure you know about the Magic Studio. Magic Studio is has a range of features that you can use for your business. We've got background remover, which is really, really straightforward. It literally removes you from the background. We've also got Magic Expand, which actually brings out the design so that you can actually add in space around the design. I'm just going to use this one here for you now so you can see what it means. I'm going to drag this out, drag this out, and it's going to add in space into those spaces that I've just dragged out using AI to say, Jackie, these are some ways that you could fill in this space. Sometimes it's hit and miss. All of these AI things are, but it's really fun to know that this is there, particularly if your arm is chopped off or your head is chopped off or an edge of the design is chopped off. You need more room. You can do that there. So you can see here, I've got a couple options and I've got some space around that design for me to use now for my graphic. Another one that I really love is Magic Grab. This is such a great one. It's pretty much background remover on steroids. If I click on Magic Grab, what it's going to do is remove the focal point and the subject of that photo out of the graphic, but fill in where it was behind with AI. So you can see here, I've got me now, but I've also it's also taken me out of the background and filled that in. You can see it hasn't done a perfect job. Sometimes it's hit, sometimes it's miss. But if I wanted to make myself bigger or I wanted to do a cool kind of cutout or I wanted to bring myself across in this graphic and have more room for some text over here, I can now do that. We've also got grab text. We've also got magic edit and magic eraser. So just make yourself familiar with those so you know that they're there when you need to solve a particular problem. All right, that's number one, the Magic Studio feature for a photo. And as I said, I've got a whole tutorial on this. So if you want more info on that, make sure you hit that link. Next up, I want to show you some incredible shortcuts. These are shortcuts. You don't need to press anything else to do. They just put you press the button and it pops up. So this is obviously on your computer. If you want to have a rectangle inserted, all you need to do is press R. I literally just pressed R on my keyboard and that square popped up. You can then make this into a rectangle using either this one here, I can drag it down here, or I can use this rectangle holder to bring that out there and out here. So this rectangle is my favorite rectangle. Do you know why? Because I can actually edit it to do whatever the heck I want it to. So up here, you'll see there's this option here for color. So I can change the color of it. Big whoop, can do that most of the time. But this one little here that says border style, this is going to be your best friend. If I click on that, you'll see a few different options for me. Firstly, I can add in a border. I can add in a really strong black border and I can make that really thick or I can make it really thin. I could add in a dotted line or a dashed line as well. Plus I can change the color of this border. So say if I wanted this to be white or purple, I can do that here. I can even make the inside of this box clear. So I just have a purple border on the outside. So, so, so wonderful. Another thing that I really love about this is the corner rounding. So I bring this like this, I can make this into a really rounded edge box or I can make this into a square edge box or even like a really long oblong pill kind of shape all with that one little shortcut of the R to insert that rectangle. You can also do the exact same thing by pressing C on your keyboard and it'll insert a circle. And again, this is a really flexible shape. I can change the border weight. I can do, well, you can't really do corner rounding on a circle, let's be honest. And you can have the dash line or you can change the colors of the lines or whatever you like. So I always recommend if you're going to use any shapes, if you can use those shapes, you can also access those from the elements section here in the shapes part. And that will give you a few different options as well. Similarly, you can press L on your keyboard and that will insert a line. And again, this is a really flexible line. I can make the width of this as big as I want. I can round the edges of it or I can make it dotted or dashed or any kind of thing. I can also add arrow ends to this. So if I click on this line start, I can add in an arrow at the start. 
square, box, any kind of thing at the end or the start. And I can do that with the other side as well. Plus, if you want to get really fancy with your lines, you can press elbowed here and it's going to put a little mark in the middle of it. And it means that I can bend this and do funky things to it. So if you want a really fancy pants arrow, you can create that yourself. And again, I can change the color of this. I can change the thickness of this, anything that I like to create this kind of design. The next hack I want to show you is a few different things to you should really know around text boxes. So there's a few things that I was even showing someone today that I didn't realize that they didn't know. So I'm going to share that with you first and I'm going to share with you a few more things that hopefully you already know, but you might not. Firstly, if I want to make this text purple, I can obviously just do that, but I can also change the color of the text inside the box. So I could put how in that different color. I don't have to make an extra text box to do that. It's all right in there. This is really helpful for when you want to kind of play with your design and make it and highlight a particular word. The reason you might think that you can't do this is because you can't change the, the, the particular font of a word. So say, for example, if I just add in a different font, here, it's going to actually change the whole text box, even though I've only got the how selected. Uh, and so just making sure that you know that you can change the color, even though you can't change the font, you can't even, you can't even change the size of a thing. You'd have to make a whole new text box if you wanted a different word in a different size, but you can change the color. And that's really helpful to know. I'm just going to teach you some basic things now. So we've obviously got the bold versus not bold. You can do this within one text box, which is really helpful. You've also got your italics. You can do that within a word, within a text box, and you've got the underline. So those are all options for you there. You've also got the strike through, which is helpful. Another one you've got here is the all caps. This applies to your whole text box. And that's just really helpful. There's no point typing everything in all caps because if you change your mind and want it to undo, you can't, you have to retype it out. So using this uppercase toggle is a really great technique for you to use. We've also got our text alignment in there. We've got our dot points and our number points in here too. If you click on it again, it switches over to number. Um, and you've also got your spacing here, which I don't think people take enough advantage of. For example, this spacing here is okay. However, I would probably recommend bringing the line spacing like this, drag this little toggle down a little bit to make this text a little bit tighter. You wouldn't want it too tight like this because that makes it tricky to read unless that's your design style. And you probably wouldn't want it super out far like this because it looks like three separate points. But bringing that in just a little bit more just helps that design to feel compact and easily read. Uh, you've also got things like letter spacing where you can space out the letters. I don't recommend doing this with kind of plain text like this or your paragraph text, but it could be really fun to try with a heading. Something else I want to make sure you're taking full advantage of in Canva is folders. Folders are a lifesaver for time saving. So if you have Canva Pro, you might have access to this brand kit where you can add in your own colors and your own logos and your own images and everything. If you don't have Canva Pro or you actually aren't using your brand kit for everything, you can create your own folders. So you can have projects here where you've got any kind of folder with any kind of thing in it. You can put into folders designs, but you can also put different elements. So say for example, I have a whole folder here. I can access it from projects or I can access it using this little side panel down here with ones that I've opened recently. If I open this, you can see I've actually saved all of my different brand elements to this folder for me to really quickly access. So say for example, you're in the Canva elements over here and you're just searching organic shape, for example. You can see there's lots of really great shapes that pop up and you might use this inside a design. You might think, oh, this looks so, so great. You might create this really funky design and then you might use this one as well. And you think this is just really pulling my brand together. I totally love it. But then you go to start a new design later on and you can't remember the search term that you used and you can't find the shapes again. What you want to do is add your elements to a folder. So if I just hover over that element and I press this little three dots here, you can see here that I can star it. That's a really great start if you don't want to make a folder, but I can also press add to folder and I can click on that and I can create any kind of new folder for my business. So I can put in here organic animals, organic shapes, and I can add that to that folder along with any other graphics that I want to add to that folder. And I've got all of those saved to a spot to make sure that I don't use them. While I'm here, I want to also show you, you can press see more like this. So if you really like a shape or a design and you want to see more of that kind of design, but you don't know what's kind of thing to search, press see more like this and it will show you like this one here where that was a jackpot. It doesn't usually have this many ones, uh, but you can see lots of different options of sharing the similar kind of design for me but just by pressing the see more like this button. Now, before I get to my final tip for you, my bonus incredible tip that I've never shared before, I want to share with you a one that I really quite like, and that is this one here, the copy style. Mm -hmm. Copy style will copy a style from one graphic or text box or image and paste it to another one. So say, for example, if I wanted to add a shadow to this design, I'm going to click on this photo, press edit photo and go to shadows. Might want to add a nice drop shadow in here, but maybe I want to change it. I want to make it a bit more blurred. 
want to change the intensity of the shadow. And I'm really happy with that style, but I want to put it on a different photo, but I don't want to go through and remember all these different numbers and figures. What I can actually do is while I'm selected on the object, I want to copy this style from, I can press this little paint roller. You'll notice it changes from being empty to being filled. And that's picked up the format from that image that I've got selected. And now it's carrying that, that, that effect. And I'm going to paste it by clicking onto the new one. And you'll see that it's just copied that exact same style across. I can do this the same with colors. So say if I had this two different shapes and I change this one to being blue, I can copy that style and paste it over here, just like that. Remembering that one, if you, especially if you've got, like if I had a whole page of these graphics to do, I could just keep on pressing copy style, copy style, copy style, instead of doing it all manually myself. All right, now I wanna share with you the incredible tip that always saves me when I have made a mistake. So say you're creating a design, but you've deleted pages or you want to go back to something you did ages ago, or maybe you totally like resized a design and you can't get back to the old size. So many times I've used this. There is a version history. If you have Canva Pro, you have a version history. So if I go to file here and I go to version history, you can then rewind to all the past iterations of your graphics. So this graphic I haven't had created for a long amount of time, but if I had this created for weeks or months, it would go back weeks or months into my past design. This is me one time I designed something ages ago, then I accidentally wrote over it. And then five months later, I realized that I needed the old version of that design. I could go back and collect that, restore it. So you can either press, if I click on this one here, for example, if I click on the one I did 14 minutes ago, I can either press restore this version and it will re-put back that, that, that version that I've got clicked on. Or I can press this drop down arrow and I can press make a copy. So say I actually like the version I have now, but I also want to access part of that old version. I would press make a copy and then it would make a new part of that design so I can then access different parts of that design. So remembering version history there is so, so important. Now that is only a pro feature along with a couple other things I shared today around the editing photo magic suite. You see anything with a crown is a pro feature. So we've got magic erasure, magic expand, magic grab, magic grab text. All those are pro features along with the version history and plenty of other things in here. And so if you do want to upgrade to, to pro, jump into the affiliate link I've placed down below this video and that will help you to do that. You'll get 30 day free trial. And it also means that you can actually start to use Canva for all that it has. I know if you're anything like me, I think using Canva free for a particular period of time is really helpful because it means that you are making sure that you're really committed to using it. But once you've decided, actually, yes, I'm going to use Canva, particularly for my business, this becomes a business expense. It's going to help save you time, help save you effort and energy and mean that you can just create things really, really quickly and easily. So I totally recommend doing that upgrade. If you're, if you're like me, sometimes like, I just want to find the free workaround to this, but it's taking me 20 minutes to get around that workaround and my time is worth money. I need to not be just trying to find free workarounds all the time to all the little bits and pieces and actually just being able to save my brand kit in Canva, being able to use a background mover, being able to do all these things so I can actually get on with the important work of my business rather than spending time dabbling in Canva, trying to find the free versions of things, you know, if you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a, a fellow stingy person over here. So thank you for joining me. I hope you really enjoyed those Canva tips. Let me know which one is your favorite. And if I haven't mentioned one, which there are so many thousands of graphics and tips that I haven't mentioned today. Let me know in the comments you're one of your favorites as well. I would love to know. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe. I share a new tutorial for Canva every second week. Plus every week I'm sharing brand and business strategy and tips so that you can make sure that you're growing your business in a really practical, beautiful and professional way. So thank you for joining me. Plus, if you would like some help designing your graphics and you're wanting to just stop guessing actually learn what design principles, learn how to create a strategic and cohesive brand beyond just Canva tips that help you save a little bit of time. I would love to invite you to my course. I have a course called DIY Design My Biz and it has helped over 300 business owners create their own incredible strategic brand and graphics using programs like Canva. It comes with heaps of tutorials. It comes with heaps of um, workbooks and help you, helping you actually learn how to think strategically so the graphics you're creating are actually growing your business rather than just kind of sitting there looking pretty. Doors are open for that right now. Just head to diydesignmybiz.com and you can catch all of the details there. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you soon for another tutorial. Bye.